All right, well. Yeah. Let's quick save again. Who? Get out of my way. I don't care who you are. I just want out of here. And just who are you? Peng is the name, and I'll thank you kindly to get out of my way. I don't care why you're here. Take all you wish if you are thieves. I just want to leave. That Seraphok has become too big for his britches. Our leaders weren't a day dead before he declared the Aaron throne to be his. Uh, then you won't mind if I help myself to your coffers, will you? Bah! They are nearly empty regardless. Seraphok has been making decisions on the sidelines for some time now. It has cost us all plenty. He does not seem concerned with profits or much of anything. The iron shortage became his pre pet project, but he has used it to inflame tensions instead of to build business. He brought He's brought us down as sure as if he was some hero. What reason would he have to provoke a war I don't know? Enjoy your looting. I'm leaving for good. Since the death of its former leader, Saravak has taken over the Iron Throne. I did not know this. Um, oh, this one technically is new. Saravak has assumed control of the Iron Throne in the wake of its leader's death. He seems uninterested in them, though. He was making decisions that will undoubtedly ruin the whole organization. He was also apparently ruling from the sidelines for some time now and used the iron shortage to inflame tensions instead of as a money-making opportunity. Whatever his motives, they are certainly not intended to benefit the Iron Throne. But who sits upon the Iron Throne? Did he play the Game of Thrones first? Yes. All right, so I'm just going to keep asking all these questions. I'm going to try to pull as much information out of these guys as I can. Who are you? Have you business here? Uh, what does it matter? Everything is in shambles. I expected more resistance to my breaking in. What is going on here? There is very little going on here. Everything is falling apart as we speak, and one person is to blame. And just who might that be? Saravok is the foul spawn that surely did the deed. He craves the power of the Iron Throne. But for what purpose, I do not know. He throws away gold like it was copper and uses our best laid plans to inflame governments instead of bargaining for wealth. He's in line to become a Grand Duke because of his efforts to fight his own chaos. But I doubt his coronation will stop his lust for carnage. Who are you, by the way? What are you doing here? I am here to clear my name of the murders of the Iron Throne leaders. Is that who you are? Then I owe you a knife in the gullet for what you have done. What, did Saravok trick you into killing them, or did he just do it himself and then blame you? I'll kill you just to be safe. I will for my father. Someone will die tonight. Well, all right. One fight. And down he goes. No surprises there. All right, what does it say here? I've met Gregor, the son of Bruno, one of the murdered Iron Throne leaders. He is positive that Saravok orchestrated the whole assassination in order to assume control of the Iron Throne. Saravak has apparently used the throne's best plots to inflame the region instead of to secure wealth and power. He now campaigns to become a Grand Duke on the premise that he will fight the chaos he- shows promise exceptional. I'm reading here. He now campaigns to become a Grand Duke on the premise that he will fight the chaos he himself created. What he hopes to accomplish once he is a Grand Duke, no one seems to know. The region is perilously close to war as you will uh let's just uh head up further actually right here is good i was thinking i had to go over there but no i'm good yeah um touch me not you are unclean probably you there stand your ground a moment i depend i demand to know what is going on here i have been sent from sembia to determine why this branch of the iron throne has foundered I found no one who will stand still more than a second. What in blazes is going on here? Why not ask Saravok? He seems to be the one in control now. Saravok, that upstart? Then the rumors I have heard are true. Our regional leaders here are dead, and Saravok has assumed their roles. Such arrogance. No doubt he had a hand in their demise, I'll wager. That would explain why we have not been getting reports on progress here on the coast. But what could he be up to? I shall have to report these findings to my superiors at once. What is your name and rank here? I shall report to you as well. Um, actually, I am the person accused of killing the Iron Throne leaders. Are you now? From what I have heard, Saravok may have had a far more active role in that killing than any outsider. 
So what have you come here to do? Destroy us all to restore your name? It would seem that we now have a mutual enemy of sorts. I think my superiors would not be ungrateful if you were to remove Saravok from this organization. I would almost call this outpost of the Iron Throne a complete loss. Though with Saravok gone, perhaps it could be built anew. Uh, perhaps it could, though I doubt people will trust you. People trust whom they wish to trust, whether there is reason or not. I would imagine that is why Saravok has flourished, plays on people's fears masterfully. If he were not so destructive, he would have been a great asset. What is he up to? No matter, I will report all of this and we will wash our hands of the whole problem. Good day and goodbye. All right, I have met Kalesia, an emissary supposedly from a far off headquarters of the Iron Throne. She seems surprised that Saravak had taken control of this regional base. He is thought of as an upstart who does not have the interests of the Iron Throne at heart. I feel like we're circling around like the same conversation about Saravak at this point. No time to chit-chat. Why, hello, Saladis. I suppose we should have expected your coming here. Bit of unfortunate business in Candlekeep, eh? What? Uh, what do you know of what happened there? I know that you are the unwilling dupe of Saravak, as w were we. It would seem that he sacrificed our leaders just to discredit you, knowing that you were perhaps the only ones that stood in his way. Of course, he also became the leader of the Iron... Our leader of the Iron Throne himself but he seems quite beyond needing us now. Such disrespect to throw us away as he did, it hardly matters now. What with his coronation imminent, I'm sure the Ducal Palace will never quite be the same. I must go. Pleasure chatting with you. Yeah! It appears that some, that to some, that Saravak murdered the leaders of the Iron Throne simply to frame me. Does he believe I pose such a great threat to him? Now that he has gained control of the Iron Throne in the city of Baldur's Gate, he does not seem to support their need. I need proof of his deeds before I confront him. Do I need proof of his deeds? Is that something that I need at this point? As you will. I'm not sure if I should be like all the way up here. All right, let's head to Scythandria. Hmm, so you've come back. If you were a smart Saladus, you would have left well enough alone. I don't know how you escaped that lord's trap at Candlekeep, but you won't be getting any farther than here. Why'd you come back here? I would have thought that you'd go after Saravak directly. Who are you to threaten us? Such anger and determination. I'm Scythandria, consort to Saravak. I have been with him since before he knew of his true heritage, the heritage you share with him. I was wondering if that was going to be important. Uh, he will be pleased to know I have killed you, perhaps enough that I might become his favorite one again. Oh, he dumped you, did he? So you're one of his bimbos. Who cares? Defend yourself. I doubt she'll ever be his favorite one. Saravak is evil to the core. Help us defeat him and we'll let you go free. I'll try it. It's not going to work, but I'll try it. A very amusing notion. I would never betray my lord. Perhaps you should try your wiles at Tamako. I'm sure she'd be more receptive to your overtures. I can never understand what Saravok saw in her. Enough of that. Come, my beasties. Let's make sure work of these interlopers. Yeah, like, just kill her. All right. Yeah, I'm not too concerned about this. Like, do you know what I had to take on just to get here? The Diary of Saravok. And two letters. And a mage robe. Why not? All right, we have Arg and Ugg. <laughs> I've been taking on you guys for, like, your type for a long time. Alright, did I get hit? Nope. Sound like I did. Mouth's acid arrow? I don't think anybody needs that. Alright, we can take those. And we have ourselves some nice stuff. Pass a good chunk of this off. Alright, the Diary of Saravok. Di Wait, can we stop the, uh, the bow music? There we go. Thank you. It would have been weird for me to read a diary during battle music. That's a little better. Alright, the 14th of Alent, 1365. Today, Cormier has instituted a ban against the Iron Throne from operating within their borders. While this is a great blow to the Iron Throne, it is the perfect opportunity for Rieltar to approach the Throne High Council with his proposal. If things go well, we could begin the operation within the year. 
The 25th of Marpanoth, 1365. I have no idea what these months are, so I assume later. Davayorn has sent a message to Rieltar, informing him that the mine at Cloakwood has been drained and is ready for use. This revelation should help greatly in convincing the Throne High Council. The second of Nighthall, 1365. The Iron Throne Council has agreed to support Rieltar's plan. He has been given all the resources he needs, as well as leadership of the project. I have expressed interest to my father, and he has promised to include me within the operations along the Sword Coast. He mentioned Mother in our conversation, how I wasn't to be unfaithful to him as she had. He made it clear that I would suffer her fate if I was. His thoughts are weak and hollow, and I shall listen to them for only so long. I've decided to take this time to make my visit to Candlekeep. I have waited a long time to research the prophecies of Alondo, and I must know if the dreams speak the truth. I will not believe the words of phantoms without proof, and the priest of Baal I confronted gave me nothing. He was old and died quickly in my grasp. If the words are true, I shall surely groom stronger acolytes than this. All right, next year, 13th of Chess, 1366. My research has gone well. The monks here at Candlekeep have been quite helpful. From what I have read, it would seem certain that the blood of Baal does indeed flow through my veins. His prophecies are, of course, ambiguous, but I think I understand them. He foresaw his coming death and seeded his essence across the land. The children born as a result bear the marks of chaos, have power with no direction, and shall feel the blood of a god within them. The deaths they, shall, they bring shall awaken the father, and through them he will rise. It does not explicitly say, but obviously this means that death wrought by the children will cause them to ascend. Fitting in since the father was the lord of murder, proving one's worth must involve an act in accordance with his portfolio. I begin to see what I must do. Death on a godlike scale. Third of Tarsak, 1366. The monk Garion troubles me. He seems to have taken an interest in my readings. I must be careful to be more clandestine in my research. I wish I could simply kill him, but I doubt I could safely murder him within this damnable library. The 11th of Tarsak, 1366. I had a dream this night. My mother was talking to me, but as she did, her face became bloated and discolored. Her voice became weaker as she spoke to me, telling me to save her from Rieltar. I could see the garrot cutting into her neck, but I did nothing. It was only a dream. That's like a, a, a dagger. I want to say it's Garot. I'm giving it like a French pronunciation. All right, 27th of Tarsac, 1366. I take my leave of Candlekeep now, and not a moment too soon, for I am sure that Gorion has perceived my heritage. One thing that I am certain of, Saladus is in actuality one of Baal's brood as well. Saladus has all the markings, and it would explain Gorion's curiosity in my studies. Though there is nothing I can do now, I'll have to make certain to return and kill the little brat. It would be foolish of me to let one of my siblings live, especially one being brought up by the Harpers, and I am sure that is where Garion's allegiances lie. Fifth of Multur, Murtul, uh, 1366. Today I met with Rieltar in Baldur's Gate. The fool still insists on calling me his son, and for now I will let him. He assumes that I am loyal to him because he raised me. Well, loyal I am, but only as long as he is useful. He's set up a base in the mansion of a destitute noble family and says that everything is running smoothly. Mullahay has established himself at the mines of Nashkel, and his kobold minions should already be should be already busily contaminating the iron ore. Only a few slaves have begun to mine out the or at Cloakwood, though Rieltar assures me that once the bandit raids begin, we'll have a steady supply of new slaves. Eighth of Hammer, 1367. Is that the next year? Yes, it is. Next year. I met with the leaders of the Chill and Black Talons. I have little liking for Ardenor, the leader of the Chill, but Tower Gauze seems to be a man of his word. It is a good thing, as I'll have to work with these mercenaries for the rest of the year. Next year, 3rd of Tarsac, 1368. Everything proceeds well. The ore coming from Nashkill has started to deteriorate, and my mercenaries have, be, have been doing a fine job of destroying any iron caravans en route to Baldur's Gate. Though some of my mercenaries have been captured, most think they work for the Zents, so no trouble has fallen on the Iron Throne. I am sure that the Zents at Darkhold won't be pleased to note that their name has been falsely used. I will have to be wary for Zentish agents in the coming months. 
28th of Tarzak 1368. I think I now have the time to deal with that old Codger Orion and his little whelp. I'll have to inform my men that I'll be gone for the next few weeks. Something of Myrtle. No time to write, but I must not for neglect my journal so. The future dead must know how the Lord of Murder again came to them. I shall hire a scribe when the time allows. Things have not gone completely as I have planned, but I will still be able to salvage the situation. Solidus is on the move to Baldur's Gate. If I could maneuver the whelp to Candlekeep, then I would have the perfect scapegoat for my plan. My mortal father, Rieltar, is there to meet with the Knights of the Shield. He has been blocking all of my attempts to escalate the hostilities between Omn and Baldur's Gate, and these meetings will only serve to smooth relations. I must rid myself of them at all and assume control of the Iron Throne myself. I cannot allow petty business and monetary concerns to interfere. Terribly sorry, father, but my true parentage calls and you are in my way. I shall be sure to instruct the doppelgangers in the exact manner Rialtar should die. I think a garrot would be perfect for the task. This area looks to be important. You should probably keep it on your person. I will. We also have a letter. Uh, this is Garion's. Uh, this one's new. Saravok, I must say that our first victim was not the challenge that my wife and I had expected. The foppish idiot had only the t most token of defenses. However, I can assure you that Entar screamed quite deliciously all the way to the end. I hope that this next mission is much more difficult from what you have told me it would seem to be. Assassinating two Grand Dukes in their own palace while they harangued the high nobles of Baldur's Gate, no less. I can't wait! You still know where to find us. You should come down and enjoy the pleasures of the Undercellar for yourself. But if I know you, that'll never happen. Your obedient servant, Slythe. Sure, let's copy that. Not that I think it matters. Um, yeah, another one. Saravok, I've received your letter and am quite overjoyed by your proposition. I have told my wife and she is as excited as I am. I accept your mission and think that your payment is very adequate. This will be our greatest feat yet. To kill three Grand Dukes of Baldur's Gate... We'll be arriving in Baldur's Gate within a week and should be taking up our usual res residence at the Undercellar. If you wish to contact us, you will find us there. Use the access points through the sewers. Joyfully yours, Slythe. Copy that. Not that I think it need to, but we have a couple journal updates on Saravok, but that's just the stuff that I read. Okay, so now I have the proof that I need. It sounds like he's going to be in the Ducal Palace. So, With let's Helm's head blessing. to the Ducal Palace. As you will. It's actually kind of difficult for me to spot those yeah. staircases leading down. With Helm's but eventually blessing. we made it. All right. Let's get out of here. And we will head to the Ducal Palace. You must gather your party before venturing forth. Must I? Um, I want to say it was up a little bit, the Ducal Palace. As you will. Because that's apparently where Saravak is. He's at the Ducal Palace, which is, I think, over here. The Flaming Fist yeah. is out to get me. I am the law. He is the law. Um... This isn't where I need to be anyway. Yeah. So let's get out of here and head up here. He'll never spot me here. Slightly far away from where he was. With Helm's blessing. Oh, yeah, he still says he has some wyverns to kill, which is not true. All right, here it is. With Helm's blessing. Quick save here. How you doing, Bill? You want to talk? Hello. Greetings, I assume you've come to the palace for the coronation of Saravok. Well then, I'll need to see your invitations. It's really important that we get inside. Could you just let us in? Sorry, only those with invitations are allowed to enter. So I need an invitation. The flaming fist. We don't have an invitation, sorry for bothering you. It's my only other option on your way then. Why can't I just kill him? <laughs> Gather your party before venturing forth. Yeah, they're not letting me in. All right, so now I need to get an invitation. 
All right, so my next thought is to go to one of the sewers. No time to chit chat. Hello, hello. I don't suppose you'd be interested in a few trinkets, a coin or two for my finely crafted wares, eh? I thought not. The iron shortage wanes, but even so, the customers do not come back quite yet. Who can blame them, though? They are afraid that because they see that the merchants are still without wares. Who believes that a shortage has ended, and they cannot still, and they still cannot hold a new blade in their hands? Blame the Iron Throne. I do, and the others do as well. Uh, I'm not surprised the role in the Iron Shortage was pure villainy. Excuse me, where have you heard such tales? As far as any are concerned in this city, the Iron Throne is a respectable mercantile group. Such talk as yours without proof will get you nowhere, I am sure. Then what did you mean? I was talking about the Iron Throne's actions since Saravak has assumed control of it. He is disinterested and seems likely to sacrifice it to fund the rearming of Baldur's Gate, and thus his bid to become a Grand Duke. It is the Iron Throne's instability which has prolonged the strife in the city, and that is why other merchants blame them. They were major importers, and without their help, it will take much longer to reassure people that all is well. It makes no business sense that they should do this, and I think there is something very wrong at their headquarters. 